So your love for All right, let's do a quick review of the iPhone 3.0 software. It's, it was released just yesterday, and I actually got a copy of mine two days early, or two day, yeah, about two days early, and started playing with it. And so uh, some of the key features that we'll talk about real quick are copy and paste, landscape keyboard, spotlight search, uh, the new Safari features like autofill, and uh, shake to shuffle. Uh, there is one called Find My iPhone, which requires Mobile Me, which maybe we can make another video about. But let's get into these features first. Copy and paste. We're going to copy some text here from Twitter. If it lets me. You just tap and hold on something. There's the copy bar. And then we'll hit copy. Go into email and let's create a new message. Once you're in the body of the email, you just double tap. And you have these options to select text. Oops. Select some of the text or select all. And then just hit paste. If you want to paste what you copied in there, that is. Hit cancel. Actually, here's one of the cool features about copy and paste. If you don't like what you copy and pasted, just shake and you can say undo paste. This also works if you want to say hey. Let's tap this, type this sentence in. You say, ah, I don't want to type that. Just shake. You can undo that typing. But if you decide just then you want to redo it, shake again. You can redo that typing. Pretty cool, I think. So let's get out of that. And now let's talk about the landscape keyboard. Obviously, Safari has had it for a little while. Show you the landscape keyboard there. It's now in the mail app. So if you just rotate this, you get the landscape keyboard. It's in notes. Something notes don't take a long time to load. Took forever last time. There it is. You just rotate, rotate this, and we have that now. It's also in your messages app, which hopefully soon AT&T will update. I really want MMS messaging. Just rotate that. You can tap the message bar and get your text. Or your, you can text with your layout la landscape keyboard. Now let's talk about the spotlight search now. If you can see down here, there's a new icon to the left of your home screen. And it looks like it could be another home screen icon, but it's a tiny little search wand. And so if you want to get to your spotlight search, there's two ways. You can slide like that, or we'll go back. Or you can just push the left I push the home screen button when you're at the home screen and it goes to the left to get to your spotlight. There's some things that you can spotlight for is to find your contacts if you know who you want to call and you don't want to scroll through the address book. Uh, this also searches my email accounts and if I have a calendar with my name in it, it shows up. You can use it to uh, launch, like say I want to listen to As Tall As Lions. And see we have all the iPod songs here by As Tall As Lions. And if you wanted to launch an app, it could serve as an app launcher. Pretty much all the ways that you use Spotlight on a Mac, it works on the phone. Um, it will definitely really come in handy because now, even though the Apple has upgraded it from nine home screens to eleven, they've now let you uh, they now let you download as many apps as you want. But the thing is, once you push your apps past the eleventh home screen, they're hidden. You don't have a home screen for them, but they're installed still. So one way you can do it is to search use the spotlight search and just find the apps and anyway it makes more sense because you don't want to scroll through 10 or 11 screens to get to an app so you can use spotlight search as an app launcher now too which would be really cool obviously I don't have that many apps right now I have three home screens which aren't that bad to scroll through so the last feature I want to talk about well not the last actually we can still go through Safari but let's talk about uh, Shake the Shuffle so you play a song once it starts playing. And you say you don't like that, you shake. You get that sound, and it shuffles to another song. If you don't like that one, shake it again. And I don't want to listen to that one. I hate to go through this all day because I like to find a great song. Yeah, there's some good debut break right there. So we'll pause that and let's go out. The last key feature I want to talk about is the autofill feature in Safari. And I've already got it saved for Twitter, so I'm just going to log out and show you how this works. Sign out. I actually hit the wrong button. Let's let it load, I guess. Come on. Twitter's acting a little slower today.
Dang. There we go. Hit the sign out button. It's doing something, but I don't know what it's doing. Alright, now it's gonna load the home screen without me logged in. And I'll show you the autofill feature. Alright, let's go into this field right here. Um, here's a cool thing about the copy and paste feature you can use now. If you want to tap and hold and then get select all, you can delete stuff like that real easy. But it's kind of useless on this limited amount of text right here. But like if you had something, say, example for like an email and you wanted to delete one of the sentences instead of moving the cursor back and tapping through all the deletes, you can just highlight the text and delete it. So the autofill feature works very much like the one on Safari on the desktop. If you type in your first time you're logging in, somewhere you type in your login and you hit go, it'll ask you, do you want to save this login? And it'll say yes, uh, not now, or never for this site. But since I've already saved mine for Twitter, you can see this autofill button is lit up. You can tap it and it logs you, or t it fills in your info and you can log in. And there I'm logged in on Twitter. Like I said, overall the OS is great. It's going to be really good when we get uh, tethering and MMS here in the States. I'm kind of jealous that everywhere else that the carri carriers have already jumped on and got it going, but AT&T is dragging its feet. Um, there are a lot of little hidden tidbit features and stuff like that that we'll go over again later. Like I said, I think there's something like 96 of them that we'll list that can help you become a little bit more of a better user on the iPhone OS 3.0. Overall, I, said it, I say it's a great update. And then hurry up and update if you haven't already. I know it's the second day that it's been released. So connect yourself to iTunes, buy it, and download it, install it, and start using it. Thanks for watching.